Cowboys, good people. With back page, back page with myself, obviously going to Qualms, and we've got the lovely Lola, lovely Lola, the honest Lola. <laughs> She's always honest. Um, obviously, just wanted to quickly talk about our uh, the reaction to the game. Uh, you in Europa League, we just finished. Final scores three nil. So, like, obviously, I'll be honest. I didn't watch the first half because I was coming back from work. Um, I did watch. I did catch the second half. So it was quite, it was quite an interesting game, um, one that we should have won anyways. But um, it was just good to get a clean sheet. I feel. Um, but what did you think, Lola? Anyway? I mean, I feel like we should start by saying like a lot of the praise or lack of praise is going to be caveated by the fact we know who the opponents were. So yeah. we're not doing, we're not talking as if we played against Real Madrid. No. But like that, withstanding, I think like the first half, well, first bit of the first half wasn't great mm. certain bright sparks were there but it wasn't great but then I think after after that second part of the first half and the rest of the um, game it was like they actually played good some played like at a level that should they should be doing that in the prem some played mm-hmm. like okay it's, it's one of those ones where I feel like as a whole I give like the entirety of the team it won but it wasn't really I'd say what seven and a half eight yeah I think it's thinking about it like, I feel like to get attended have to have all been like brilliant and they all weren't. So I feel like it was a it was a good like a B plus type of performance. So <laughs> one of those where like certain players I was like okay then and certain players was like of course she did that. So it was it was just <laughs> <laughs> what did you what <laughs> I was saying what did you think of the starting lineup because obviously it was interesting to see like Pepe Pepe started even after the whole Leeds thing, was, was you happy with that or what? I was perfectly fine with that because I think, don't get me wrong, Leeds game, I was vexed at them. If you saw, if my, if you look at my timeline, I was like, it was my group. Yeah, group. I saw it, I saw it. That's why I, I stayed away from you. I was not in the best, like, headspace, but I was purely because I was just annoyed in it because mm-hmm. he got his chance after talking to the press about wanting to play. Exactly. And then you've all, the backlog of his performances have been great and then you've obviously previous, like his dad's in the press saying, having to almost like tell Pepe publicly that you're not here finally meant to be like actually doing your job mm. so all of that and then he does something stupid in the game because like I said it to my friend before I can kind of forgive or well, forgive I can be I can forgive a red card if it's like you went in for a late tackle or yeah. it was a hand on they did something stupid and then it was too but headbutts ones are kind of annoying because it's like for one thing you didn't even headbutt him properly yeah. like if you're going to at least headbutt him properly you yeah. didn't even do it's like it was almost a waste. It's like whatever, but then in, in fairness, weirdly, we played better without him on the pitch. <laughs> yeah. But think after I could kind of calm down, I was like, okay, it it was still just a red card, so mm-hmm. people need to kind of like temper themselves when it comes to oh, he's forever done at the club. So I kind of assumed he's got three games off out of the prem. Mm-hmm. He's going to play the Europa League. I, I would have figured it would have been overkill to not start him in this game because he got a red card in the prem. It would have been overkill and pointless. And also, in terms of wingers, we're not exactly blessed. So mm-hmm. it's one of those who's there who's going to start. Mm-hmm. And he should have started because I, he needs as much game time as possible. Yeah. If not just only to get some semblance of confidence or like continuity in his game anyway. So, and I move that. He played well. Again, I don't yeah. know who was uh, against, but he actually played well. He was playing with like a bit mm-hmm. of the bim that I wanted him to play in the Prem. Because he's like... It's one of those things where he does this thing where you see it against lesser opposition. He's got his chest out. He's playing comfortable. Yes, he'll try things and it won't always come off, but he's trying it and he'll shoot. But he won't do that in the prep. I want him to kind of bring that energy yeah. into the prep. Then you have has to have 10 out of 10 games every single game he plays, but at least bring the same intensity in mm-hmm. all of the games. Like even if you are bad, it's like it wasn't from a case of you not trying. In this mm-hmm. game, he got his goal. He was shooting dictating play he was actually running and passing and asking for the ball back and it's like okay this is what I want now you're going to be in Europa League for the next three games anyway so do yeah. that yeah no it's true it's true I, d- I definitely saw you saw a little bit more urgency in this game and that's something that me personally I've been asking for him to do anyways and it's just a shame it's taken that maybe obviously he knows it's a reaction or we all know it's a reaction to what happened in the Leeds game I'm sure Arteta had words with him as well prior to the game about, you know, his approach to it and what he expects from him. But 
it shouldn't have to take that much for him to show that because you think about how much money he came to Arsenal or, you know, how much it costs to come to us. Those are the types of performances that we need and we need the consistency. That's, that's basically it. Um, yeah. Obviously, there was a few I was saying as well in one of my videos talking about the academy players. There was a lot of academy players that featured in the squad. I was quite happy with that. Did, was there anyone that kind of stuck out for you that stood yeah. out? Because I... If you like, know me, I have a whole big like love for a lot of this generation of the Hell Hell Boys. Probably to detriment because yeah. I sometimes use some of their poorer performances. Mm-hmm. But like in the game, who started it? So from the Hell Leno, it's like Nelson started. Obviously, yeah. Ainsley started. In mm-hmm. started, Bullock started, and then um, Emil Smith Rowe and Balogun came on. Mm-hmm. And it was like from that from the uh, academy lot. I'd say Ainsley had a good game, mm-hmm. like he had game he was passing he was defending while he was making the runs like the left side was really good mm-hmm. um Nelson was another one who I really liked in this game he's always been a good like ball carrier he holds on to the ball very well he's technically sound his issue is end product some of the times and he got, he got that in this game he got his goal mm-hmm. so that was I thought, I thought Nelson was good the entire game um uh I feel like with Eddie it was a bit of a letdown like, he was sort of getting into the position, so obviously he's unlucky with the offside goal. Mm. But one of those things where he's the more experienced of the lot of them, mm. of like the eight range or bar um, Ainsley. So I expected more from him. I feel like his touches and a bit of his movements were off in this game again. So it was a bit of a, it was a bit of a eh kind of game from him. But yeah. it's one of those ones, where he's 20, 21, so it's one of those ones where Ooh, hopefully yeah. he does yeah. kind of. Because again, he's got he's one of the ones with the most experience, so I expected mm-hmm. a bit more from him. Mm-hmm. Obviously, um, Emil Smith Rowe and Balogun came on, and obviously they assist um, um assisted Balogun for his goal, and I was gassed at that because I love Balogun. I like I generally think he has like a really good ceiling. I try not to overdo it, but I feel like his he's like he's got the what people think like he's he's got he's got an eye for goal. He's always been in the shoe and all the levels he's been at, and he's technically. Like neat, he's like as a as like a as one say like if you were to compare Eddie and him, I'd say what kind of separates them is that Balogun's technique is a lot more secure and mm. he can do more than just kind of be a not like it's a bad thing, but he's more than just a box striker. Yeah. So like he can do more and he's quicker as well. So that was there. And obviously I love Smith Rowe. He's more of a technical, tidy midfielder who can run and he can actually do the incisive passes that Willick can't do. Yeah. So, you know, there's games where we're forcing Willock to play a 10, which is not his position yeah, at all. Yeah, which is kind of out of his Yeah. Depth. Yeah, yeah like Willock is more of a driver of the ball, late runs into the box kind of guy, not the link pass mm-hmm. final ball guy, which is more Smith Rowe's kind of bag. He can mm-hmm. do the passes like that. So, I was, I, I really liked Smith Rowe's um, appearance and Balogun's. I thought it was, I mm-hmm. think they were all, like, mainly quite good. Like, none of them really, let's say, disappointed me. I'd say, the, I th- I'd say the closest to that is probably Eddie, but even that, it was fine. Especially when you compare to, when you compare his strike partner, I yeah. take Eddie's performance over Lacazette's one. Basically, speaking of uh, Lacazette, I was just literally flicking through Twitter and I saw a picture of him, and I just I wanted your thoughts. Just <laughs> like he's struggling, he is struggling. I feel like his game, he he definitely. Well, we we've said it before. He needs a goal, but he desperately needs a goal. He desperately needs to to find himself within this team because sooner or later he's just he has become a fringe player. He has become one of those players that no one really fears as a defender. If I know that Lacazette is on the pitch or he's starting in the game, I'm thinking it's going to be an easy game. It's a simple game. What do you think Arteta needs to do in order to get the best out of him? Because it doesn't seem to be working. Um, it's a bit, it's a sticky one, isn't it? Because mm. if ever you want to see Lacazette look sort of at least comfortable, you'd think it would be a position like Mulder. But then he... He, he he wasn't good. Like I'm trying to be, he wasn't good. He wasn't good. He wasn't. I think he made maybe one two runs. It wasn't great. His touches weren't brilliant. He wasn't really getting his shot. I still, I think that there's part. I think it was the first half mm. where he had like ample time and opportunities to shoot, and he just kind of held on to the ball for yeah. God knows what. He wasn't even trying to pass it. He just kind of was there, and it's just a bit. And then he started to get a bit like he was annoyed, and then when he got subbed, he looked. He looked upset, and I was sitting there like, "You weren't good." <laughs> good enough. I think, but do you think he knows? Obviously, he knows he's not good enough. But it's that whole 
oh, I was just about to get into the game, or maybe he felt that he had a bit more to give. And I, I can understand that, that he, he wants the full 90, so he, at least he can get something out of the game in terms of a goal. But it's getting to the point now where I'm thinking the opportunity that we had to sell him in the summer, we could have we could have sold him, correct? And it's just like, is that a big regret now? Because I, I was one that was saying, no, we need to keep hold of Lacazette. We should have him because, you know I mean? We haven't got many strikers. If Aubameyang doesn't score, at least we've got Lacazette there. But I have to take my words back because it's just not looking good for him. And I can understand his impact within the squad, his personality within the squad. But then when it comes to on the pitch, it's not enough. It's not good enough. It's not good enough, man. Yeah, it's not because I get the idea of him wants to play 90, but I feel like if he played a 90, it would have been almost like a detriment to the team because he wasn't <laughs> doing it. Yeah. He wasn't, he wasn't doing, like, say, the dirty work of, like, picking up the ball from deep or whatever. He was, like, deeper, but he wasn't really doing anything deeper. Mm-hmm. And he wasn't getting in behind. And then when he was sort of in the kind of attacking areas, he wasn't exactly shooting. Yeah. So it's one of the ones where, yeah, I mean, he hasn't been a 90-minute player since he's been at Arsenal. Like, Wenger figured it out very quickly. Like, a lot of the fans were... I remember, because I was actually a yeah. fan of... I was, like, happy to have him. him to start. I remember a lot of a lot of the fans... Yeah, they were, like, very kind of annoyed when, when Wenger kept taking him off at, like, 60th minute, 70th minute. It's like, why won't... And then the more we were playing him, the more we realised it, especially when we brought Bramian It's like, oh, he really can't play 90 minutes. Because when you see him play 90 minutes, he looks... Gas, even in this game, yeah. by about the 15th, he was just his head, he was barely moving. Mm. So it's one of the ones where he just doesn't, I, he doesn't suit the league at all. Like, he doesn't suit it. I feel like any, one of his like best attributes was he would shoot. He doesn't, he doesn't shoot. He doesn't do that anymore. anymore. He doesn't really run as well. I feel like the league, the pressure, all of it, I don't think it suits him. I feel like France, <laughs> Spain, something where the, everything, the pace is a bit slower. Yeah, he's better, and it's a whole situation because, like, he we definitely should have sold him in the summer. Mm. And uh, it was like, it was a whole thing, was that like we didn't sell him because he, um, the evaluation was a couple mil under what we wanted. And I'm like, mm. realistically, Arsenal, it, it was dumb because I think I can't work like that. He didn't bring anything to warrant us thinking that he was worth like mm. whatever, whatever it's like. For Lacazette, now his value is even going to go down even more because he's going to go into his final contract in sets in, in summer. Yeah. So now we've wasted it and we're probably not going to be able to get him off on anything decent. Mm. And now we've, we've wasted minutes on him. We've wasted, like, put it this way. I think we were slightly off the valuation of getting Awa. Mm-hmm. Lacazette, there you go. There's your extra money to get Awa. So it's one of those ones that it, it affected yeah. our, our summer plans because we didn't sell, like a lot of the players we have, we didn't sell them when we should have. And that's not on that's the board. Because Eddie really realistically should have been flogging off so many of the players we had who had like people wanting them. Like Mustafi had 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 want had wanted Holding had people who wanted them. Kalazan had people who wanted him. Socrates, all these players had people who wanted them. But apparently it was a case of they didn't think the valuation was the same. I'm like, they're not good. The world knows they're not good. Pretending <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get great money off of them. Is you're wasting your time, you're wasting our time, and then you're going to do this whole thing about how we didn't have enough money to buy someone else. Like, yeah, because you kept players that aren't good. Mm. Situation. But like I said, it's just... It's sad. It's sad. He's there, he's there so... Yeah. Stuck. Well, at least January, we're stuck. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask, just obviously moving on, because I don't want to dwell too much on that. That's, you know, it's done. Mm. That's it. We've got, we got the win, we've got the W, we've got a response or a reaction from the squad, but just quickly moving into the game against Wolves on Sunday, like, what's your thoughts? Do you think, how do you think we're going to go up against Wolves? Ooh, let's see, we're home. So, um, I mean, the home thing isn't really much of a difference at the moment. Wolves aren't doing great at the moment either. They got a draw against Southampton, but it wasn't great. They haven't been great for a minute now, but now they're we. Uh, do you think like Jimenez and that will pose us problems? Because I was looking at this Southampton game and yeah, yeah. I mean, like for the majority of the game, I think up to the 70th minute, we, there wasn't much Wolves were doing to affect Southampton's defence. But then I think uh, when they made a few changes, they put on Neto. And I think like Neto, Podence, Jimenez, that kind of combination is kind of dangerous. And I'm thinking, can we handle that? Can we keep a clean sheet? You know, it was just... 
it's so unpredictable. That's the thing. For me, on paper, at home, Wolves, we should. With our stronger side, we should be able to, to win that game. But I'm just taking into consideration we're struggling at, to find fo- form. We're struggling yeah. to find form. So. Very washy team. A win one week, a loss the other week. Yeah. But Wolves are, I think Wolves are very much a late in the game team. Mm. Like, so basically, we need to put finish the score, game. Yeah. Or get get the goals in early. So even if they do kind of ramp it up, we're kind of we've got a cushion mm-hmm. because it's a pattern with them. They kind of do nothing most games and they break, mm-hmm. and then something happens. Yeah. And then our defense, especially our right side of the defense, has an issue when it comes to like tricky wingers or even like physical uh, strikers. Mm-hmm. So I can I can easily see Jimenez. Neto, Pedence, like leaning or veering to the right, mm. going off on either Bellerin and holding. Yeah. So it's going to be it's going to be a tricky one because Traore is always going to be an issue. If if Partey is not fit, then that midfield is just going to be oof, because <laughs> I've always said it. Our mobility is like non-existent. Yeah. Our mobility is Partey. And Willock and El Nenny. Those are the most mobile midfielders we have. Bios, maybe. Sabatis Sabat is, is, is tricky. He can, he's a ball carrier. Mm. But, so, like, like evade a press, but he can't get too far from the press because he has no, like, athleticism. If you watch him, he yeah. gets to watch him. Like, even the lead game, he got away from a bunch of the presses, but he got caught up to very quickly because he can't move away from them. He can, like, trick it. But he, wasn't, he won't pass quick. So he'll just hold on to it rather than doing a quick pass. So he kind of slows it down again. So it's all, it's all odd. So it's a, it's a situation where the midfield is going to, they're going to need so much protection, but I don't know, because I don't know if parties fit. And then he's, he's still got the, the COVID. Still a question about him, yeah. Again, I'd play, if it's me, I'd play with it again, but don't play him in the 10. Just play him in a, like a midfield three mm-hmm. so that he can add a bit of the, um, the covering. Because mm-hmm. Saka will get overrun. He just, just, he will. Even yeah. if he has a decent game, he tends to, Get overrun to bat as well. So just for for more covering, yeah. And mm. then hopefully that Luis is fit, and then you don't you play him over holding. Yeah, for another avenue. Well. Yeah, yeah, for another avenue of passing, so they can at least attempt to get Abamyang in behind. And where are you second, playing? Where are you playing Abamyang? You playing in the middle, or are you playing? No, I'm playing in the middle. I'm playing. In the middle. Are you still, you're so happy with playing him in the middle? Yeah, because playing him on the left is for me redundant, especially because we. He, I feel like Arteta is refusing to actually play him to his like play into his strengths on the left. Like he, it's fine about him playing on the left if we're going to play that kind of way. Where that about the ball, yeah. yeah, we're not doing that. So I rather because I, I feel like if we play on the left, that means we have to play Lacazette, and Lacazette is, is not good. Mm. So play, I'd rather play because Abamian his hold up plays are brilliant, but he's very good at linking. Yeah. So you play a Nelson or a Sako like as wingers. Mm-hmm. They, they like to link, they'll do one touch here and there, they can hold on to the ball, they'll get in behind quicker. I'm fine with that. Just get David Luiz to assist with some balls over the top. You maybe get some balls into the midfield, get Xhaka to actually pass it forward rather than sideways. And then link it up again and then just like, because realistically, watch it after one game, I don't see the point in throwing away um, over down the middle. Over down the left for me will always result in, a, 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 in like as it playing, and that's never good. Mm-hmm. So I'd rather persist with a Bamiyang down the middle, play a back four, and don't have such wide gaps. That was the issue against the league games. We had the four, he played the, he played the formation we wanted, but he played it incorrectly. He played Willock in a 10, but Willock's not a 10. Not and a then 10. he had midfield so far away from a Bamiyang. Yeah. Even if sometimes Bamiyang did have the ball, no one was there. Support. Yeah, no one to support him. So just, I'd more or less play the same team. Obviously, Pepper can't play, but I'd play Nelson and Saka from the start. Yeah. Rather than and Willian and Pepe. So what do you reckon the score will be? What's your prediction? I'll go 1-0. Oh, okay. I'll go 1-0. Okay, you'll be because, a little bit. Because you're struggling I'll, with goals. Yeah, because yeah, we can't... We go, go, I'm not, I'm not going to go like 3-2, whatever, because we're struggling for goals. So <laughs> I'm not going to go mad about that. But I don't think Wolves are brilliant. They haven't been brilliant for a minute. Don't get me wrong. It could be... An, I wouldn't be shocked if they got a draw out of it or they get a goal out of it. Mm. But I feel like a couple of games you play the right people and don't try to be over and don't try to overthink it. 
Mm-hmm. Like sometimes that's what Atasha does, he overthinks simple things. Yeah. If you just kind of let them play, mm-hmm. even if we have to like lock it up a bit, let them play a bit. And then I feel like we can get at least, I know it's like it's small pickings, but a goal out of this game, I feel like we can win it. Yeah. So it's one of those ones where it's weird to see what happens, isn't it? We play holding, bro. I don't know. Because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He's saying like, play holding, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. I don't like, want to. <laughs> I, have zero, I have zero trust in that boy. I know, I know. After that Villa game, I've lost. I've lost <laughs> not. I know even before some people, even yourself, are probably just saying, ah. But that one there, I'm like, nah, nah, nah. nah. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. My faith, my faith is gone holding. I'm sorry. <laughs> but you're going to have to do a lot to get my faith back. Um, yeah, I reckon it would either be a, like you said, a 1-0 or um, I might go for a 1-1. I think we still haven't found that. Actually, no. I'm going to go for a 2-0. I'm going to go for a 2-0. Yeah. yeah. I think after having a clean sheet, it would be good. Leno looked all right, made a few saves that game. Um, a lot of the players will be well rested. Tierney's got some fire in his in his belly after that game as well, and he came on for a little run out, which is good. And yeah, to get Saka back will be good. Partey would be amazing to play in the middle, but I don't know if Arteta wants to risk it so quickly. So I'm, I think he'll probably still start with maybe Xhaka. Um, yeah. But yeah, we'll see. Yeah, so I'll go for a, I'm going for a two nil. I hope Aubameyang gets off. He score, gets off from running, scores a goal because we need it. There's only so much we can protect him, you know. Yeah. And he needs it. He's so in the game. He's yeah. getting annoyed. He's making runs and no one's giving him. No, that's game. that's another thing. Is he makes a lot a lot of runs that don't get noticed by the players, yeah. and that's that's the sad thing. Yeah, he's, like, he's, a, he's a he's a he's a happy player. Yeah. The longer he goes without scoring, you you, you can physically tell. You can see his playing. body language, everything. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, boy. So that's that's our predictions. That was our thoughts of the game and tonight in, in the Europa League, a three 0 win for Arsenal. Happy days. You know, we're gonna win that. Gonna win the Prem, etc. No, joking. Look, yeah, we'll, 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 <laughs> we'll take we'll take each game as it comes. Um. Also, just just quickly, a lot of people in the week we was talking. They were talking about Arteta and um, whether he needs to be questioned as a manager because. Oli Gunnar Solskjaer, the likes of Oli Gunnar Solskjaer and Lampard were, qu- were questioned as well when they were losing games. Do you think Arteta should be questioned at the moment? Because personally, I don't think that. But do you think that? I think there's nothing wrong with questioning, but I'm not here for the, the ones who are doing the most and saying he needs to be gone. I think that's very premature. Like, yeah. I don't think there's any issue with like questioning what he's doing in terms of tactics or player selections or whatever it is because some of it is a bit mad so I think it's fair to talk about it but in terms of like some people are saying oh no I'm done I want him out I'm like he's barely been it I don't think he's even been in the job for a year yet and we've all known the squad we have don't get me wrong we can talk about what he's doing with the squad Mm -hmm. it's very premature to to, be asking for him to go it's like he needs to he needs to settle with the squad and again bar what if we look at the team, like Gabriel, um, what's his name? Okay. Gabriel, Partey, and Willian. Mm. Two out, of, two out, two out of three of those were really good signings. Yeah. The rest <laughs> aren't signings. So it's like, see, at least January, even even I did, I I didn't give him until the summer signing, and then see what happens there. Let yeah. let him get rid of so much. We have so much crap in the team. We have. We let, have. let him get rid of a lot, and then let's see what happens then. If it's if it's still a thing where he's being weirdly stubborn and weird about it then you can like okay yeah. you're giving but it's a bit it's too, for me it's too early anyway yeah I said it's too early I think it's unfair because he hasn't spent the amount of money that Lampard and, and Oli Gunnar yeah. Solskjaer have he's in fact won a trophy compared to the other two managers so you know for the people to start questioning him is kind of I just think it's a thing where everyone has always hated Arsenal um they anytime they see Arsenal a chance to kick Arsenal while they're down, they'll do it. So this is just another opportunity, and I just hope that the fan base stick behind them. They back Arteta because you can see that we have come a long way. Others will question it and say, "No, look at the performances against Villa or maybe Leeds." But we can see like there's small improvements within the squad, and it's it's about being patient. As an Arsenal fan, it's about being patient. Um, yeah, yeah, it's not going to happen overnight, so don't expect that. Not with Arsenal. 
for sure. Um, but yeah, no, <laughs> that's interesting. It's interesting, but no, it's a good way to end it. Look, back Arsenal. Arsenal got Wolves on Sunday. I think kickoff is at quarter past seven. So hopefully we'll do a show after that just to give our, our feedback and on the game. Hopefully a W. Um, but apart from that, hope you lot are well and enjoy it. Thanks for listening. Thanks for following. And uh, peace and love. All right. Well, love.